The Seventh Crusade, The Ransom of a King Victories in war tend to be a double-edged sword. On the one hand, they can boost the morale of those who win after suffering many setbacks, while on the other, they can blind the victors to the hidden threats posed by their enemies. The Seventh Crusade is not only the story of a defeat that arose from the reckless pride of a nobleman ill-prepared for war, the story of a captive king, or the story of a sultan betrayed by those he trusted most. It is a story about broken loyalties and unfulfilled dreams. Preparations for War The Seventh Crusade began with an attack on Jerusalem. The Ayyubid Sultan of Egypt, Al Salih Ayyub, conquered and sacked Jerusalem after the end of the Ten Year Truce agreed with the Christians in the Sixth Crusade. On November 27, 1244, the Bishop of Beirut sailed for Europe to ask for help from the Christian kingdoms in the face of the Muslim invasion. This new convocation was somewhat different from the previous ones. England decided to stay away because it was already going through a war against the Scots. Hungary refused to participate because of a conflict it had with the Mongols, while the other kingdoms had territorial disputes. Only one king decided to participate in this crusade, called by Pope Innocent IV. His name was Louis IX of France, who agreed to carry out this crusade after being cured of the malaria that afflicted him the previous year. It took him three years to collect special taxes to pay for the campaign, organise the government of the kingdom during his absence, which he delegated to his mother Blanca of Castile, and reach a peace agreement with King Henry III of England, while he carried out his crusade in the Holy Land. The king's plan was to conquer Egypt, or at least part of the Nile Delta, either to create a new colony or as a bargaining chip to regain Jerusalem and the Palestinian territories lost by the latest Crusader defeats. He was accompanied on his journey by his brothers, Count Robert I of Artois and Count Charles of Anjou, as well as Duke Hugh IV of Burgundy. This company had about 20,000 armed men and departed from the ports of Marseille and Aguiz Mortez, the reconquest of Damietta. The Seventh Crusade had several drawbacks from previous Crusades. After docking in Limassol, Cyprus on September 17, 1248, the Crusaders were forced to remain there while a war raged between the Pisans, Genoese and Venetians for control of the region. After the end of the conflict, at the end of May of the following year, the expedition left in about 120 ships for Egypt, but were forced to separate due to a storm. This situation caused only a quarter of the Crusaders to arrive in Egypt with the King, and an undetermined number of straggling ships ended up arriving gradually in the following days to the Egyptian coast. On June 5th, 1249, the Crusaders decided to go for their first objective, the city of Damietta, which had been briefly taken by the Christians during the Fifth Crusade. Faced with this new invasion, the elderly vizier Fajia ad-Din, head of the Ayyubid army, ordered the evacuation of civilians from the city, while a Kurdish and Arab garrison prepared for the fight. The Crusaders, better organised than the defenders, ended up taking Damietta in one day, after the garrison disobeyed the order of the vizier to burn the pontoons that allowed access to the city. The flooding of the Nile forced the Crusaders to remain in the city until November 20th of that year. To keep himself occupied, King Louis converted the mosque into a Christian cathedral, assigned streets and markets to the Italian republics, and dealt with the discouragement of the Crusaders, held back by bad weather and disease. Louis IX also rejected the proposal of Sultan al Salih Ayyub to exchange Damietta for Jerusalem while the Egyptians organised sneak attacks against the soldiers who left the camp. The El Mansoura Embouchure When the lowering of the waters of the Nile finally allowed the Crusaders to advance, Louis IX marched towards Cairo, leaving a large garrison to protect Damietta, while Bedouins and Egyptians relentlessly attacked the invading troops. These attacks were followed by two events that changed the course of the war, a change of government and a tactical error by the Templars. On November 22nd, 1249, Sultan al Salih Ayyub eventually died of tuberculosis, prompting a ruling junta to assume control of the war while the heir was in Al Jazeera. On December 21st of that year, the Crusaders arrived before the city of El Mansoura, 
where they faced continuous lightning and Greek fire attacks by the Egyptian army. It would not be until the night of February 7th, 1250, when Robert I of Artois managed to cross the channel that separated them from the city and began an attack on his own, the enemy camp, killing Fajia al-Din ibn al shaij the head of the Egyptian army. After the victory, Robert decided to rush with his troops, without waiting for the arrival of reinforcements, towards the city of El Mansura. The Crusaders managed to easily enter El Mansura, but once inside, the Bari Mamluks ambushed them in the narrow streets, killing 285 Templar knights, including the reckless brother of the French sovereign. From the ambush of El Mansura, only five Templars arrived. The new Sultan. After the fall of his brother, Louis was harassed by Egyptian forces, while the French king tried to take El Mansura. At the end of February, the new Sultan, Turan Shah, arrived in Egypt and ordered the construction of a flotilla to intercept the supplies coming from Damietta that the Crusaders camped in front of El Mansura were receiving, a tactic that led to the capture of 80 enemy vessels. After eight weeks of siege, the French monarch decided to order a retreat to Damietta. His forces had been decimated by famine, dysentery, and typhus. Belatedly, the king decided to accept the offer of the late al Salia that he had earlier refused to exchange Damietta for Jerusalem, but the Egyptians, confident of their victory, turned him down. This desperate situation led one of his sergeants to give the order to capitulate, while the king was ill with dysentery, which made Louis IX's crusaders prisoners. After several months of negotiations, mediated by his wife, Marguerite de Provence, and Emperor Frederick II of Germanic Roman Empire, the Sultan decided to execute about 300 prisoners. Finally, on May 2nd, the Bari Mamluks assassinated Turan Shah and tried to finish off the imprisoned crusaders. However, Margaret's negotiations with the rebellious Mamluks were successful, and a ransom of 400,000 Tawnese pounds was paid, and control of the city of Damietta was handed over. End of the Crusade After leaving Egypt, Louis and the rest of his troops headed for Acre, capital of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Once there, he consulted with the lords who accompanied him on whether to remain in the Holy Land or return to France, and decided to stay there and rule Jerusalem temporarily while King Conrad was absent. He then tried to form an alliance with An Nasir Yusuf, great grandson of Saladin, Lord of Homs, Aleppo, and Damascus, to confront the Egyptians who had captured 3,000 Mamluks, who were eventually released after several months of negotiations in March 1252. Louis repaired the defences of Caesarea, Haifa, Acre, and Jaffa, placing a contingent in the latter city to confront the Egyptians from the south. This plan would also fail after the Egyptians and Syrians signed a peace agreement in April 1253. Finally, the death of his mother forced Louis to return to France in July 1254 to face a possible English invasion. With the return of the king to his lands, the Seventh Crusade ended in another failure for the Christians, which would lead them to an Eighth Crusade to regain the Holy Land. We hope you have enjoyed this seventh video about the Crusades, and that you will join us in the bloody history of this conflict, which continues and ends in the story of the Eighth Crusade. Don't close the video yet! Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like, if you like the content. It will help us grow and continue to make much more content. Now, without further ado, we say goodbye.